Disney Plus is rolling out their password sharing crackdown, similar to what we've seen with other streaming outlets like Netflix. But there are differences between how Disney is deciding to implement this new policy and the way Netflix decided to implement their policy, not to mention the market realities of both these companies when they decided to roll these two different programs out. So we're going to go into details on that and seeing what Disney is actually doing and just how the public is reacting to it, because it's not very good for Disney right now. This article right here is from that park place, which has a lot of the details that I'm talking about. The Walt Disney Company is making it more difficult for families and friends to share accounts in separate households. The so-called password sharing concept is facing an ire of a company seeking to implement a similar system as Netflix. When Netflix eliminated the ability to share accounts amongst family and friends, the result was a booming stock and increase in subscribers. However, not all is a surefire hit for Disney with this maneuver. Unlike Netflix at the time, Disney is losing market share. It has yet to be seen how a weakening platform performs when it is made more difficult to obtain it. The below chart here is from Nielsen and it shows where the majority of people watch their media from. And you can see uh, streaming is 41.4% of that. So a plurality of this and that's further broken down into all these different streaming platforms with YouTube taking up a majority followed closely by Netflix at 8.4%. Uh, down here, you can see Disney Plus uh, is tied with Tubi at 2.1%. And I think something interesting of note when it comes to that is because uh, Tubi was bought by Rupert Murdoch for around $440 million in 2020. Meanwhile, Disney spent over $70 billion for the Fox deal to acquire that whole catalog. So Disney gave Rupert Murdoch $70 plus billion and he spent... 440 million of that to buy Tubi, and now they both have the exact same market share when it comes to streaming. But that's not necessarily everything for Disney Plus uh, alone, because Disney now acquired ownership rights of Hulu. So when you combine there together, it's 4.8 percent. So uh, low, significantly lower than what we're seeing with Netflix, but it does put them third overall or second if you don't count YouTube, because YouTube is kind of a entity in and of itself uh, so i don't necessarily believe that it should be counted on this but that still is streaming and they have hulu tv and other things like that so i guess it makes sense to put it in this category but that's for july of this year when you look down at what's been going on following that things have actually gotten worse for disney and uh, hulu as you can see disney plus and hulu which are largely merged and interconnected captured a combined 4.8 percent of all television watching during the month of july of course that's significantly lower than both netflix 8.4 percent and youtube 10.4 percent which are in different classes of scale and scope it should also be noted that disney is still paying to uh, finish its acquisition of hulu whereas youtube is largely just a profit making machine for its parent company alphabet and then you look at the charts for what we saw in august and things have increased for disney plus a little bit now it's at 2.3 percent but for hulu it's dropped a little bit now it's at 2.4 percent when combined disney plus and hulu lost 0.1 percent of market share for the month but a more worrisome statistic stands out whereas disney plus gained 0.2 percent hulu dropped 0.4 percent this could indicate worries that disney is cannibalizing hulu via its content sharing plan are coming to fruition one could wisely ask, what does this matter in the grand scheme of things? But the answer should be alarming for Disney executives. The latest information indicates that Disney Plus does not drive as much revenue per user as Hulu. The gamble is that cracking down on password sharing will create better parity, but it's a gamble nonetheless from a company that is not driving better revenue via content demand. And this talks about some of the latest shows that's come out on Disney Plus this last summer, The Acolyte, Agatha All Along, which didn't really capture the audiences and maybe got some people to watch it, but they didn't drive any new subscribers to the platforms. It's just something that they actually need. We've seen some uh, leaked documents coming out of Disney that shows that actually per user, they're only generating maybe a couple dollars. Uh, and even then that's not necessarily all profit. So Disney plus has been suffering those last couple of years. And a lot of the things that they're doing as a result of that, the price hikes cracking down on password sharing, is their attempt to try to make the company profitable or trying to make the part of their company profitable because 
they promised their shareholders back in 2019 when they launched Disney Plus that by Q4 of this year that it would be profitable. And so far, it's almost the Q4, and we really haven't seen that at all. The most that they've said is back in quarter three earnings call that they're profitable on their streaming ventures, but that also includes Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN Plus. If you take ESPN Plus out of the mixture, then Disney and Hulu are actually in the red on that one. And this is kind of troubling, especially when you consider that Hulu was profitable prior to Disney acquiring them. So basically, Disney acquired Hulu, and since they acquired it, it's become less profitable for them, which is pretty bad, especially when you consider that they're still continuing to pay this off. And that's why I think Disney is trying to crack down on the sharing of passwords because. They think it worked out for Netflix because, well, they were also a growing platform and they're already profitable and it worked out for them. So maybe it can work out for us as well. It's probably the mindset for them. And this is kind of the way they're going to go about doing it because it's a little different than what Netflix was doing with it. Netflix, uh, I think it was relegated to the IP address. Uh, Disney Plus is doing it a little bit differently where they're saying that you have certain devices that are attached to the home account. So if you have a home account and you have devices that are usually on that IP address, then they consider those like the home devices. So if I watch it on my tablet or phone or something like that, and I go places, I can log in on that same device wherever I am, as long as I have an internet connection. Um, if you go to a place like, let's say you're staying at a hotel or Airbnb or something like that, they're saying that you can still log into there. You just have to select that you're from, uh, or that you're not at your home at the time, or if you move, then you can select that that's your new address or something like that. Uh, my whole question is when they're saying that, if you could actually just lie, for instance, I'm not really sure about all the details. This is all it says. If you're on the go and you see the message, this TV does not seem to be part of the household for this account. You can mark yourself as I'm away from home or select update household if you've recently moved and need to reset the household location for your Disney Plus subscription. That's all the details this really says about that whole aspect of it. And I'm just wondering if a person could just share the password with someone and then they just log in and just say that they're away from the household or if they maybe have to log in every single time they do that and click that option or I don't know, maybe Disney will be like, well, you're too frequently logging in from this location. But to me, that just goes to say like, well, who's to say like me who has a Disney plus subscription doesn't have regular Disney movie night at a friend's house or something like that. I mean, that's entirely possible. Are they saying you can't do that because it could be people just sharing passwords or maybe they don't want people logged in from multiple locations at one time or something like that. I I don't know how this is going to work out. It seems to me just going by this, that it's a way of trying to get around their rules. But I think despite all this efforts, obviously it's trying to get more people to pay for subscriptions to Disney plus. And I do think there are people who are just going to be like grumbling like, okay, fine, I'll do this. It's the same thing when we saw people, uh, when they ever, they hike the price, there's going to be some people who back out and say like, well, I'm not going to support this anymore or I can't afford to do this anymore. So I'm going to cancel my Disney plus subscription. Uh, and when it comes to crack down on password sharing, I think we're going to see some of that too, but I think there's also going to be some people who are going to decide like, okay, I guess I'll just buy my own Disney plus subscription now. But for the people who are just choosing to abandon it, this is at least for Disney, ultimately a short-sighted solution because they're trying to really hard to reach profitability. And so far they haven't been able to really increase their subscriber base in any meaningful manner. So that's why they're resorting to measures like this to try to force people to buy subscriptions or to try to hike the price in order to bring more money out of people. And up to this point, it really hasn't been working. And the only other solution is to provide quality content that makes people want to actually subscribe to Disney Plus. And with the way things have been going lately, they really haven't achieved that. And that's why I think we're going to see more stuff like this. I mean, obviously, they can't crack down on passwords any more than or maybe they could do more than what they're currently doing. We'll just have to wait and see what the future holds. Uh, But as far as hiking the prices, yeah, I'm sure uh, that's going to continue on in the future because they're going to try to, at least for companies like Disney, they can't just be profitable. They have to have continual growth. And there's only one way they actually can continue to grow. And that's either to gain more users or to get more money out of the individual users. And there's going to reach a point where 
you're going to be losing more p- revenue from people dropping it versus the revenue you gain from the new subscribers. And most people are kind of getting upset with uh, this latest move right now of cracking down on the passwords. And some people are calling to cancel their Disney plus subscription. Uh, like I said, some people will, some people won't, but it's going to get to a point where Disney is going to be losing more money if they try to increase the price anymore. So I don't know what's going to happen with them in the future. I think what they probably should do is what they should have done a long time ago, which is instead of trying to buy their own or create their own platform, which was essentially just a Bob Iger vanity project. They should have just taken a portion of that $70 billion that they spent on, uh, on just Fox alone and bought Tubi instead of just in just license that with all their Disney stuff. I mean, I think Tubi would have been pretty successful if that was the platform that you would go to, to watch all Disney stuff. And that's already ad supported. And when people looking at this now, they think like I can either pay a subscription fee to watch stuff ad supported, or if I'm going to be watching stuff ad supported, then I might as well just be going to Tubi because this is where Disney wants people to be. They want people to be on the ad supported because they make more revenue that way than people paying the extra premium to watch it ad free. But like I said, people are just going to choose to watch stuff for free with ad supported unless the content on Disney plus is worth paying that extra for. And right now it's looking like that's not the case. I think people only watch it now is because it's the Disney brand. But as we've seen the last couple of years, the brand is kind of damaged and it's slowly dying unless they turn things around at the company, but that could still be a while off. Let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below though. And if you haven't already, make sure you click that subscribe button if you want to stay up to date with the latest entertainment news. And don't forget to click that like button and share this video out there because it really helps out with the channel. Thank you.